Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for coming back. This is episode nine in my Luminar AI tutorial series. We're covering a lot of things. We're still on the edit module. This is the last video about the edit module because today we're on the professional tab. So here we go. I've got an image and on professional you have optics and, and a few other tools. These are super powerful, very cool, very useful I might add. And to be clear, I've done nothing to this photo. So it's got some spots in it, all that stuff. We don't care, we're not talking about that. We're starting out talking about optics. Now in Luminar 4, there was a tool, a, what was called a canvas tool, and the name of that was called Lens and Geometry. Optics is the new version of that, so if you click on that, if you have a RAW file, you have these two options, only on a RAW file, to auto uh, automatically correct distortion. So if you click on that, you can see that's kind of done a little bit. I'm gonna click back, and then you've got to remove chromatic aberration which sometimes is like the color fringing that you see along the edges of high contrast areas. And usually you'll see that chromatic aberration is kind of a green or purple fringe. Not really any here, but that's fine. Anyway, you have that ability on a raw file. Again, that's only on a raw file. You also have advanced settings. The defringe option helps to remove noise or halos in high contrast areas. So if you click on that, it'll do it. Don't really have that here, so not coming into play. Lens distortion is a great slider. You can use it to increase or decrease pin cushion or barrel distortion. You can kind of see as I go each way what it's doing. And basically you can use that in combination on a raw file with the automatic distortion correction. That will automatically correct what it thinks needs to be done. But if you want to go further, you can come in and do that season to taste. I'm going to hit reset, get rid of that. There's also de-vignetting, so some lenses, and at times you may see like a, a little bit of a, vin a vignette, right? A little bit of a dark edge. The de-vignetting will help remove that. As I drag this to the right, you'll see that the edges are kind of lightening a little bit. If you go really far, you might overdo it in some cases. It doesn't look bad here because the photo is fairly dark to begin with. And the midpoint slider just helps to refine the de-vignetting. Okay, so that's it for optics. Now, I'm going to get a different photo because remember, on a RAW file, you have these two here. I'm going to get a TIFF and show you the difference. Okay, here's a shot from Iceland when I was at the Luminar camp. And under optics, you will see that you don't have those first two options. So you can just come in here and do lens distortion manually. And you can see how that impacts the photo. And same with de-vignetting. I'm going to skip that and go on to super contrast. Now this was called Advanced Contrast in Luminar 4. It's effectively the same thing, but it gives you really fine control over the contrast in your image. I love adding contrast to an image. I think the play of dark and light comes in really handy and help you, helps you, you know, visually impact the photo quite a bit. And therefore, on the Essentials tab, in the Light tool, I use Smart Contrast all the time, but some photos, really Super Contrast will come in super handy. Super contrast, super handy. Okay, so separates it by the types of tone. So highlights contrast. As I drag this to the right, you'll see what it's doing there. And the balance will help you choose the midpoint, which will impact how the first slider above it will operate. So I'm gonna hit reset on that. I'm gonna do a little bit of highlights contrast here. Midtones as well. I think that comes in pretty handy. Shadows contrast is basically gonna lighten those shadows though. So I tend not to use that one very much because I like having a little bit of shadow in my photo to begin with. I like that play of dark and light, but just using super contrast, you can see I went from that to that. And this is something I like to point out when I talk about contrast, and that is it does impact how the photo, uh, the colors, I should say, in your photo appear. So if you look at the before, it looks a little bit less saturated, a little bit flatter, right? Contrast will add a little bit of drama. The contrast, the difference between dark and light is impacted, which also impacts the color. So there it is before and after, and I've done nothing else to the photo. So keep that in mind. If you think you're gonna be playing with contrast, you may wanna do that before you go do color adjustments. And this is a perfect time to go to the next tool, which is one of my favorite, which is color harmony. And speaking of color adjustments, this thing is so awesome. In Luminar 4, it was called Color Enhancer, but here it's called Color Harmony. It's divided into four sections, all of which are fabulous, and every photo is different. I recommend experimenting a little bit. But here, Brilliance is basically gonna pump up the vibrancy of the colors in the image. As you can see, you can get really over the top really quick, so just be careful. And then warmth is gonna be, do I make the image warmer or cooler? I'm gonna hit reset. Color contrast is really powerful and it comes in handy. It's not something I use all the time, but it's a great slider and tool to have. As you drag the color contrast to the right, what's happening is the hue that you've selected is getting lighter and the color that's opposite that on the color wheel is getting darker. So there's a lot of blue in this photo. Let me move this to the hue to blue. 
So in other words, I'm gonna increase the color contrast of the blue tones, so something about like that. As I drag that to the right, you will see, and this is terrible looking, just to be clear, but I'm just showing you how it works. As you drag it to the right and increase the amount of contrast for the blue, the blue is getting lighter, the colors opposite blue are getting darker. So it looks terrible there. It looked okay um, on some of the warmer tones. You can kind of see how that's happening and the blues are getting darker. Use sparingly, season to taste, all that kind of stuff. Split color warmth is another popular tool here and that is basically if you want to pump up the warm tones, drag that to the right. If you want to neutralize them a bit, drag that to the left. The opposite is true of cool. So if you go to the left, you're increasing that, making it cooler. If you go to the right, you're basically neutralizing those cool tones. And then color balance, probably my favorite color tool in any product anywhere in the history of photography. It's so fun, it's so powerful, but basically it allows you to choose shadows, midtones, or highlights, and then come in and adjust the colors in each. So you could come in here and say, well, I want a little bit more blue in the shadows, Jim, and you know, maybe a little bit more cyan as well. Uh, I'm kind of making this up, just showing you how it works. Shadows, uh, maybe I'll skip midtones. I'm gonna go to highlights because it was a beautiful sunrise. I wanna pop that color, really wanna make it warmer. Okay, so I'm gonna take these cyan and red kind of toward the red. You can see how that's popping. And maybe I wanna add a little bit of magenta tint to it and maybe a little bit of yellow as well just to kind of pop that overall color look. And all I did is shadows and highlights and I didn't do big moves, but if I look at the before, there it is before and there it is after. You can see I've got a nice looking sunrise here in Iceland. I think those warm tones are really popping. So color balance is a fantastic tool. I highly recommend becoming good friends with it if you like to manipulate colors in, in your images like I do. I'm gonna hit reset and I'm gonna hit reset on color, or excuse me, on super contrast as well. And now we're gonna talk about dodge and burn. So dodging and burning is basically lightening or darkening. Dodging is lightening, burning is darkening, and you can do that selectively around the image with these tabs. You click on lighten or darken, or you can erase. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna click, uh, actually I'm gonna click darken, and I'm gonna increase my brush size a little bit, and I'm just gonna paint this in here. Now this isn't gonna look good. This is not something I've practiced. This is not a workflow. I am just showing you how it works, but you can come across and darken areas selectively by using that slider. At the same time, you can come in here with lighten, the same tool without changing things and say, well, I wanna lighten this part of the sky. And again, this looks terrible. This is not what I recommend doing to this photo. I'm just showing you how it works. But there, I came in and lightened the slot sky. I darkened that area, that looks terrible, so I just need to turn it off. But I wanted to show you how it worked. What I recommend doing is Depending on the size of the area, I would use a smaller brush and I would never start at strength of 50. I would start at strength of like 10 or 12. And let's say I wanna darken this area. I would start, whoops, uh, notice when you change tools, I was on light and I set the strength and the brush size, but when I click to darken, darken, it goes to the default. So I'm gonna, actually I'll keep the size high, but I wanna bring that strength down. I'm gonna start at about 10. And now I'm gonna come in and do a little darkening in this area. And you can see it's a much more subtle implementation because I'm not doing as much of a strength. So you can paint over it to continue to impact that area if you want to. As I continue to paint, it gets a little bit darker and you can come in here, turn that off. There's the before, there's the after, a little bit darker. And really all you're doing here is you're controlling contrast in very specific areas by darkening or lightening or both. That's basically what you're doing. Changing the distribution of light is changing the contrast in the image. And if you want, click on erase and come in here and erase what you've done uh, to remove that. So that's basically how that works. It's very simple, by the way. After you apply all that, you can adjust the overall amount so that if you've made it a little bit too dark, but you don't wanna erase it and things like that, just pull the slider down and that'll help adjust it. Very powerful tool, very useful. And last but not least is clone and stamp. Now I did a video recently showing two different ways to remove objects from a photo. Clone and stamp is the more powerful of the two. Erase, as I talked about that in that video, allows you to come in, highlight something, and tell Luminar, hey, get rid of it, and figure out what to do about it yourself. Clone and stamp, you're erasing something, but you're saying, I wanna put these pixels in place of those pixels. So in this case, on these two little, uh, these figures in the distance, honestly, I would just use erase to do that, but I will use clone and stamp here to give you a demo of how it works. So you have an, a, a radius 
and I'm just going to increase that to make it easier to see. Softness, if you look at what's happening to the inner circle, it's getting either bigger or smaller. The more I drag it to the left to make it less soft or harder, you go all the way left, you get a hard edge, which means there's no gradient or transition zone between what you're cloning and stamping, whereas I tend to go like this. I prefer to have softness pretty high, so that it gives you a little bit of that gradient zone and then opacity will just increase or decrease the visibility. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and I don't know how good this is gonna look, I'm gonna take a little bit of this hill right here and paint it on those guys. So what you do, you can see it says click to set the source. I'm gonna click there. Now I'm gonna reduce the size of my mouse. And because I selected there, when I start painting, I'm painting that area. You can see there's a line there. I've now painted that line here. So not a very good choice. I can always hit reset and I'm gonna choose, you just click option if you wanna change the spot and I'm gonna click there and option and now paint again. And if I move my mouse, you can see I've done a much better job. I'm also gonna paint that over these guys here and you can see that they're gone and now while I'm at it, that is a little too dark. I'm gonna paint that and you can see I've gotten rid of those guys and I think if you didn't know I did that, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. And that's how clone and stamp works. Very powerful, very easy. I'm gonna hit reset and bring those people back. I kinda of like them for scale. But that's my summary, my friends, an overview video of the professional tab. Powerful stuff with, with optics. Keep in mind, raw files have a couple of options that other f file formats do not. Super contrast, color harmony, dodge and burn, clone and stamp. It's called professional and these are advanced tools, but hopefully I've shown you that they're not that hard to use. And I don't want you to be intimidated by them. You can always undo things if you end up kind of messing up your photo. And to keep things clear here, all your edits in Luminar are non-destructive. So you're not ruining a raw file if you do something. It's not writing over your file. So that sums up the Pro tab, my friends. And that sums up all four of these videos about the different editing tabs, Essentials, Creative, Portrait, and Pro. Lots of powerful tools, lots of fun you can have. I will be back with more workflow videos showing different things you can do with the tools on each of these tabs. But now I've got to go work on my next video in this series, which is going to be about local masking. Thanks for watching, my friends. Appreciate you guys tuning into the series. I hope it's helpful. I'll see you soon, and take care of yourselves out there. Adios.